So keeping in line with your sexual harassment policy, what do you need to do as a team leader, uh, office manager, managing broker, a broker in charge if you're listening in another state, um, principal broker, all of these, you need to conduct a very thorough, impartial, and quick investigation. And I mean quick, not, not quick, make it short. You better do it promptly. I mean, you better not wait a couple weeks to do it. You better do it when it was alleged. The alleged harasser should not have any direct or indirect control of this investigation. All right? So they need to be kind of removed from the investigation. You need to interview all of the people that are involved. That would include the person that's the complainant, uh, the person filing the complaint. You need to interview the alleged harasser. You could also interview other people that might reasonably, reasonably be expected to have any relevant information. Perhaps someone that's in the cubicle next to them. You know, the her and I'm not going to say that all sexual harassment cases are valid. Let's be upfront and be honest. There is a potential that sometimes some cases may not be warranted or valid. They could be subversive in nature. So there could be other people that you may need to talk to to go, hey, dude, did you overhear this guy every day asking her? Or did you hear these comments? Or did you see the emails? And somebody's going to go, yes, I was there. I heard every one of those comments. Or, or, no, that's not what he said. She embellished the story a little bit. Or, no, that's not how it happened. So understand that this investigation is an investigation. Some investigations are valid. Some may not be. So, but you, you need to make sure that you do it promptly. You could potentially ask someone else to investigate. You could have a third party person come in. You might have two people interview the uh, complainant and the uh, harasser and that you might, maybe you have two people. But before you complete the investigation, you should make sure that the first thing you do is assume it's valid on its face and do whatever you need to do to stop this particular thing from continuing. You know, maybe they are adjacent cubicles. Maybe you move the cubicles. Um, if they have to be separated, remember that you cannot separate them in a manner that would burden their employee because that, in essence, could be looked at as sexual harassment, too. So you can't say, well, okay, sweetie cakes, we're going to move you to third shift while we do this. That, in essence, could be sexual harassment, too, because you are burdening their employment during this investigation. All right? The involuntary transfer of the uh, complainant could constitute unlawful retaliation. That's what I'm saying. You cannot say... I'm going to move you to a different location. We're going to move you to the uh, office on the east side while we figure this out. Dude, I live on the west side. That's not conducive for me. That is burdening me. That could be considered retaliation. <clears throat> you can't say change their scheduling. We're going to move you to third shift or you're just going to do the weekend shifts from now on or you just come in at night and that person will just come in at days, daytime. All of those can be construed as retaliation. So be careful that trying to stop this could also lead you to another problem. I personally would call an attorney out of the gate if I had an agent come to me, want to claim sexual harassment. I would say, okay, let's do that. Let's get a hold of our attorney and let the attorney maybe guide how do we separate this, how do we stop it, because I don't certainly want to be accused 
of doing one thing when I'm actually trying to help the other thing, all right? So just be careful of that as well. Do the investigation promptly, do it thoroughly, and investigate everybody that you need to investigate so that you can find out truly what happened. I'm going to take a step back. You can find out, first of all, if it's a warranted allegation. Then you can find everything that happened and everything else that went on because of the investigative process. All right?